Hey guys, this is Connor with studyskills.ie and in this lecture, lecture 3 of the how to learn section, we're going to focus on a method called the chain method. Now the chain method is quite similar to the peg system which is the one we did in the last lecture in that you're going to be connecting images together. But the main difference is that each image in the chain method is connected to the next forming a long chain. And the cool thing about the chain method is that unlike the number rhyme peg system where we can only memorize 10 items at a time, with the chain method we can memorize as many items as we want. So as you can imagine, that's going to be a lot more beneficial to you when you're going to be learning lots and lots of information. Just small little housekeeping, when we're using the chain method we want to make sure that the images that we create are vivid, unusual and that they connect with one another. So again, we've kind of gone through this already, but it's very important that I point that out right now. So let's get into it. I've got 20 words here, 20 random words, and we're going to try and memorize these. So if you can, pause the video, go through these words for around two minutes, try and memorize as many as you can, then write down and check how many you actually got. So you should have done that and now we're just going to see how many did you actually memorize. Again a good score is between 10 and 12 but with the chain method we're going to be able to remember all 20 words. Now similarly to the last lecture I'm going to go through and give you the pictures that I find myself wanting to use when I try and link these images together. And what I want you to focus on this time is how each image makes you feel. Actually take a second to feel the response and really picture what I described to you because that helps enormously with the memorization process. So as I go through this, like I said, I'm going to give you the images that I create, but don't just skim over the words. Pause the video and actually go through the image in your mind. This isn't going to make any sense to you unless you do the exercise. So again, the way that the chain method works is that we link the first word with the second the second with the third, the third with the fourth, and so on. So, for example, here's the first five words. We've got broom, cat, cabbage, magazine, and car. Now, in the chain method, we're going to connect the first word, which is broom, with the second, which is cat, then the second with the third, which is cat and cabbage, then cabbage with magazine, magazine with car, and so on. And we're going to do this with all of the items that you wish to remember. So if you can imagine, if you have a hundred items, you can still remember those hundred things just by connecting the previous image with the next. So let's get started. The first is broom and cat. Now, here's the image I create is, imagine a cat riding high in the air on a broom. Dress the cat up in a cape and a top hat like a witch. And now imagine the cat soaring down right next to you screaming, Meow. So again, it's quite of a vivid, interactive image, and it's quite easy to remember. Next, we have cat and cabbage. So the poor cat falls from the sky into a field of cabbages, but they are not normal cabbages, they are jumping cabbages. The cabbages jump from place to place, and the cat needs to dodge a maneuver to ensure it doesn't get squished by one of them. Next, we have cabbage and magazine. Sitting down for lunch, you open up a magazine that is sitting on the table next to you. Unfortunately, however, you soon find out that the cover and all the pages have leaves of rotten cabbages stuck to them. The smell is terrible, and you now have cabbage juice all over your hands. So this particular image is actually a good example of how you can go through and feel those kind of emotions of, that the image portrays. For example, feel the rotten cabbage all over your hands. Feel the cabbage juice. Smell the terrible cabbage stench. And then as you go through that and create that, that image is going to stick in your mind a lot, lot better. Next is magazine and car. So we have a car made out of magazines is parked outside of your house. The car sticks out like a sore thumb because it's all different colors. You can see all the magazine pages flittering in the wind and if it gets any windier, the car just might topple over. Next is car and tree. So instead of leaves having, or instead of trees having leaves, 
They now have little miniature cars on their branches. The trees smell like petrol and when you get close you can hear the mini engines running. Broom, 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 broom. Again, actually hear that sound as you create that image. Next is tree and chair. All the chairs in your sitting room now look like trees. Instead of four legs, the chairs now have one big one, just like a tree trunk. The chairs aren't very comfortable, and when you sit down, branches stick into your backside. Chair and milk. The chairs in your kitchen have udders underneath them that you can use to get milk. In the morning, you place your cereal bowl underneath your chairs and squeeze the udders to put milk in your bowl. Also, you have to say moo or else it doesn't work. So you can see how I'm trying to make these images interactive, which makes them more memorable. Next we have milk and washing machine. There is milk swirling around in a massive washing machine. It goes around and around and you hear a loud slush sound as you stare into it. Next we have washing machine and grass. Your washing machine is made out of grass. Every time you put clothes into it, your clothes come out very, very green. They even smell like grass, and they make you very itchy because there's grass all over them. Okay, so that was around 9 or 10 of the first uh, words in that list. And I, I went through those images very, very, very quickly. So for you, you're probably going to have to pause the video after each one, imagine that scenario in your mind, and then move on to the next. So before I'm going to pause, I'm going to take a break here and then we'll do the next part in another video. But what I want you to do is to go back now and see how many of the first 10 words you can remember. And when you can get all 10, then move on to the next video.